Hi there, Sagittarius. Thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for May. This month begins with a lot of emphasis on life's practicalities. Now, if you're somebody who naturally has an interest in being careful about what you eat or drink or do in exercise, this is going to give you a further boost. However, if you're someone who's a little bit lacking in these areas, and indeed spent some of April actually burning the candle at both ends, because there was enough sociability there to understand this, then certainly you're given an opportunity as this new month starts to be much more grounded about these kind of practical issues. Especially on the second when Mercury moves into this area, helping to concentrate your thinking. And that's going to be very important as far as your work is concerned too. Unfortunately, however, by the end of week one, both Mercury and Mars, which are in this zone, are going to be opposed by Saturn, and Saturn is going to bring some very intense energies to bear to the, them both. This could lead you to feeling really quite drained, exhausted, or frustrated. Any kind of politics that's going on at work, for example, could really get you down. Psychologically, there could be a point towards the end of this first week when you do feel a little bit down. And it's going to be important for you to remember that our health is not just physical. It is emotional, it is spiritual, and of course, it is also to do with just feeling that we're in touch in a holistic way with all the different elements of our lives. So don't just see your body as a machine because it could falter and let you down. The great news is that on the 10th, there is a solar eclipse which can put you on the front foot. And also, this solar eclipse combines with Mercury. Now, if you are a Sagittarian that loves the big picture, discussing anything which is inspiring, interesting, fascinating, sometimes the detail of things can leave you a little bit cold. But this solar eclipse can actually help you to apply yourself in a very precise way in the following six months. But the real magic also comes on the 10th from the move of Venus into your opposite sign. Venus is the planet of love of course but it's also the planet of finance in its own way it can attract all sorts of goodnesses to us and you may be pleased by the kind of greater harmony that it can trigger between then and the end of the month in fact on the 16th mercury moves into this sector too now mercury from the 2nd to the 15th is moving through a bit more of a brittle zone and it could mean that at times your nerves are twanging so as Mercury moves, it helps you to be a bit more objective and detached around all sorts of relationship issues. But I have to be honest with you, from the 15th, there is a clash which begins again between Pluto and Uranus. Think back to last year, from June for five months. It happened then, it's going to happen again. And what this is saying really is anything to do with money, particularly around your social situation, which tends to go out of your bank account a bit quicker than you would like, and perhaps unexpectedly, or there are just surprises going on around your cash flow. That's something that can get you down a little bit, and you need to be very careful that you're not spending more than you can actually afford. However, also from the 16th to the 22nd, Venus and then Mercury forge a very positive link to Uranus, suggesting that it can be the quirky and unusual people you chat to, meet, get to know, or just your general friends that you just love being with because they're just such fun and stimulating company to be with. Now, Jupiter, your ruler, also forges a fantastic alliance with both Venus and Mercury in week four of this month, and this could bring someone magical into your world. If you meet someone at this time who you really, really like, this relationship could become something so important. On the other hand, this influence could help to put something into a better context that perhaps has been struggling. It would be easier to be sweeter in general about all sorts of relationships. Unfortunately, on the 25th, there is a lunar eclipse, which could be challenging because anything to do with the more psychological side of life and gossip, and any innuendos that aren't quite particularly enhancing a view as an individual can drain you a little bit in, in, the, in the next six months. And therefore, it's going to be important not to buy into the type of people who can undermine your confidence. Keep your barriers up. Don't listen to tittle tattle. Don't take part in it. And this can help to protect your morale. 
Now, on the last few days of the month, the Sun forges a great link with Uranus, and then Mars moves into a superposition on the 31st. And these changes can help you to be feistier and a little bit more on the front foot when it comes to dealing with rivals at work, but also taking the initiative when it comes to your love life as well. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now.